Hi, my name is Svan with the three scanning company Holo Creators. Today I will show you how to do a uh, 3D scan for free using just your uh, cell phone camera. Uh, the technology is called uh, photogrammetry. It has been covered by many video tutorials, but I think uh, whether you're a novice or an experienced user, I uh, will show you something new today because I'm not only making the 3D scan for free, I will also uh, make the 3D scan with a professional scanner which costs around 20,000 euros and later on I will compare the two and uh, just a little heads up the deviation between the two is just 0.2 millimeters so uh, what we get uh, for free is actually pretty damn good. Uh, to follow this tutorial you will need uh, well apart from a cell phone camera for uh, free software packages you will need uh, Meshroom that's for uh, converting the pictures you have taken into a uh, 3D model. Uh, we will need uh, Mesh Lab. That's for uh, 3D scan cleanup and alignment of uh, different uh, 3D scans. Uh, then you will need NetFab. That's for taking measurements on the file. And then finally, we will need uh, GOM Inspect. This is for uh, comparing the free scan with the uh, professional scan. So the very first step is to actually make a manual measurement. So for that I will take uh, this caliper here and I will uh, take a measurement on the flange. If you don't have a caliper you might as well take a ruler. Um, then I will take uh, three separate measurements. That is just to get an average. And then you'll see that the measurement is 76 0.2 millimeters and this is our reference measurement which uh, will get uh, very important down the road. Now we start the actual scan. I will place the part on this yellow box and then I'm taking my cell phone camera and I'm moving around the box taking many pictures from uh, different uh, angles and perspectives. Um, while making these pictures I pay attention to have a very good lighting Actually, the more light, the better, but you don't want to have harsh shadows on the object. I will make two picture sets of uh, around 100 pictures each. One is where the part is sitting on the flange and one where it's upside down. That is because I also want to record the inside geometry of this part. Now it's time for a mesh room. We uh, import the pictures that we just made with the camera. Uh, this is super easy just by dragging and dropping and then you see the start button, you hit that and the software will calculate the three models from this uh, picture. We do this two times, once for the picture set that we made from the part sitting on the flange and once where it's upside down. So in the end we have two 3D models created. The two 3D scans which I have created in Meshroom, I will now import one by one into Mesh Lab. And here I will remove everything that is not really needed in the scan. Because Meshroom has, well, apart from the part, it has also recorded some parts of the box. And these areas we want to remove. To remove areas of the 3D scan, I can click up here on the button Select Faces on Rectangular Region. And now I have this uh, red selection box and uh, I select it in red and then I hit the delete key and this is how I can remove geometry. And when I'm happy with the result, I can just uh, export it as an STL file. I think I've said it before, photogrammetry is a great technology, but one major disadvantage is that it's not recording scaling because you have a picture set and the computer calculates a 3D model from it but it doesn't know how big the part is in reality. For that, uh, we now check the uh, scaling of the 3D scan. I will import the 3D scan to NetFab and here I make a new measurement and then I uh, select three points on the outside of the flange and then NetFab uh, supplies for me the uh, uh, correct measurement, which is in this case 6.98 millimeters. And now I click on uh, scale. We make a quick calculation. Uh, you remember the uh, reference measurement that we have taken that was 76.2 millimeters. We divide that by the uh, uh, measurement we just did, which is 6.98 millimeters. And then we get the scaling factor of 10.917. And this scaling factor we put in here and then we hit scale. And now you can see how the 3D model got uh, 
uh, scaled up. And again, we export the file as an STL file from NetFab. The final step for the actual scan is to combine both 3D scans, the one sitting on the flange, the one upside down. For that, again, we use MeshLab. One by one, we drag and drop them into the software. Uh, you can see them now here inside the software. And now we hit the yellow button up here with an A. And uh, on the right side, now we have the two scans. We select the upper 3D scan and click on glue mesh here. Then we select the lower 3D scan and click on point-based gluing. And now this new window opens. And now we try to find distinctive features which are similar in both scans because we are helping the computer to align both. This is by selecting points with numbers. You should at least select three points. And now we click on OK. And the rough alignment has been done. And now when we click Process, um, the detailed alignment will begin and also the computer will supply us with a global alignment error, which is in this case 0.001, which is really good. In a final step, we uh, again select the parts that we don't really need, uh, the upper and lower part, and hit the delete key. And now our scan is finished. Uh, the final step is to uh, select both scans and flatten visible layers. And now we can export the 3D scan as an STL file. I told you that I uh, also 3D scanned this part with a professional scanner. So now I want to show you the comparison between the two. In this animation, first you can see in yellow rotating uh, our free scan. And then afterwards in green, you can see the professional scan that we did. This scan was made with the 3D scanner Artex Space Spider, uh, a professional scanner that costs around 20,000 euros. It's a little cleaner, but uh, well, you could expect that from a professional device. Now let's check how accurate the free 3D scan actually is in comparison to the professional scan. For that, we will use the software GUM Inspect. Uh, again, drag and drop both uh, 3D scans into the software, the free one and the professional one. Then we hit uh, automatic uh, pre-alignment. On the right side, you can now see an explanation. It's a gradient going from red over green to blue. And uh, well, if it's green, that means there is no deviation between our free scan and the professional scan. If it's red, that means there is uh, material from the free scan above the professional scan. And in the blue area, well, it's the other way around. Uh, we also want to see in selected uh, places the deviation. And for that, we can uh, set deviation labels. These are like markers showing us in selected areas the deviation between the two scans. And here you can see that the deviation is about 0.2 millimeters between both scans on average. I will supply all files on our blog to download them, the free scan, the professional scan, and also the report that compares the two. On a final note, Holo Creators, my company, is a uh, 3D scanning company. So we do uh, 3D scans with uh, photogrammetry, structured light, and even computed tomography, that's x-ray scanning. And uh, you get really accurate scans with that. So the accuracy range that we offer goes from uh, 0.1 millimeters down to 0.005 millimeters. So we make highly accurate scans. So if you have a, have a project uh, where you need this kind of accuracy, please get in touch with us. Now that we have created a 3D scan for free, for many of you that might just be the first step in a long process of uh, working with these files, um, many of you may want to convert this STL file into a step file. For that, uh, I've also prepared a tutorial. It's called STL to Step. I will link this right here. And there I will show you how to use free software to convert an STL file into a step file.